What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I color grade ProRes RAW and the general workflow in Premiere Pro. So I'm going to get straight into it. This is the um, this is a film that I'm currently working on and we shot this last night so I took a couple notes, some notes that we will need. You should also take notes whenever you are editing or whenever you are getting client work or anything like that. These are some notes that you really need to know. So we know that we are shooting in a ProRes RAW format so if you are not editing in Premiere you might need to transcode it using something like Assimilate Scratch which is what I personally use for that. But if you are working in Premiere Pro as long as you install the add-on which I will link down in the description below from Adobe you will be able to import and work directly with ProRes RAW. I highly suggest creating proxies so that you can work with the proxies. It makes your editing a lot faster and smoother. However, I happen to have a computer that can handle ProRes RAW, but a lot of computers cannot, so we'll get into that in a minute here. So these are the notes I have. ProRes RAW is the codec that we're working with, which will also help us whenever we're actually rendering. We can render to ProRes. Um, we know that the color space is supposed to be VLOG Rec 709. I'll show you about that in a minute. We know that it was shot in Cinema 4K, which is legitimate 4K, not that Ultra HD 4K. It's like real 4K, which is 4096 by 2160. And the ISO is 800. In case we want to change the um, ISO later on, we can. We know that this is what it was shot at. However, if you're going to change the ISO, you can't change the ISO in Premiere. You can change the stops of, uh, you can change which stop, uh, you can stop up, stop down, but you can't change the ISO, at least from what I've seen. Um, maybe there's a trick out there, I don't know. So this, these are the notes that we have. So we're going to get right into it uh, using this information. So with this information, uh, we can set our sequence settings. So if you haven't already, um, made a sequence just drag and drop your clip onto the timeline it'll create a sequence uh, i've named mine main so you're going to want to right click on that click on sequence settings and make sure that your sequence settings is correct so i render in ultra hd 4k which is 3 3840 by 2160 so i would suggest setting it to whatever you want you want to set it to deal with your resolution right now square pixels uh, fields, no fields needed, display format, doesn't really matter for this particular project. Um, and then the time base, which is your FPS, I have mine set to 23.976, which is what it was shot at. So if this is what my settings look like. It varies project to project. Um, whenever I'm doing VFX or intense color grading, I will use maximum bit depth and maximum render quality for this one. I will go ahead and use maximum render quality, but I'm not going to use maximum bit depth. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And make sure that you're working color space. If you're going to use Rec 2100, HLG, or PQ, make sure that you sh you understand your color spaces if you're going to go with these workflows, because each one has a different workflow. I typically use Rec 709 because most computer monitors can only display Rec 709 properly. So, I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. And then, if you if if you have clips now at this point, whenever you change the resolution, if you have clips that look like they 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 don't look like what they should, because mine definitely didn't. Let me see if I can go to a spot like this right here. This is not proper. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that clip and click set to frame size, which is the sequence setting. And then it will automatically squeeze in the entire image, giving me a nice natural black bar that will scale up and down. If you use fake um, PNG black bars, it can look a little bit wonky depending on what you're displaying it on. So natural black bars is definitely nice to have. So with that being said, Let's get into the color. So if you're not already in this tab, go to Window, Workspaces, and choose Color. Uh, the first thing we need to talk about is your color space that you're actually working in. So go to Effect Controls, and if you are using ProRes RAW, um, well, first you're going to see Main, which is the timeline, and then you're going to see Source. Click over to Source, and if you're using ProRes RAW like me, you will see ProRes RAW Source Settings. So this is where you can stop up, stop down. You can go to negative 2. You can go to plus two. If you need to, you can do whatever you want. 
Now, whenever I imported it, for some reason on import, the color space was BT709, which is incorrect. It should have been VLOG. That's what it was shot in. I don't know why it didn't import it as such, but it was shot in VLOG um, using an Atomos Ninja 5 recorder. So we changed the color space to VLOG, and now that is set properly. So the first thing I'm going to do now that we've done that is create an adjustment layer because I have multiple angles in the same scene with the exact same lighting. Um, so if if you are shooting a project, make sure that your lighting is consistent on multiple angles. Just filmmaker advice. So uh, I'm going to go back to the metric scopes. I'm going to right click in my project files area. Right click. I'm going to click on new item and adjustment layer. Make sure that the adjustment layer is set to the proper resolution, the same as your sequence. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to name this color grade plus correction. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the timeline over both of these clips. So now, whatever we do to this clip, it will do the same thing to this clip without actually modifying the clips themselves, which is really nice um, because instead of color grading each clip, I can just color grade once and then drag it across and then it will color it will color all of them and, and cover it all. Um, and it will match the shots as well. And you don't have to save presets or none of that. It'll just match the, the shots for you, provided that your lighting is consistent. So now I'm going to go ahead and start the coloring process. So with our workflow, we know that we shot it in VLOG. We need to convert it to Rec. 709 first thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to basic correction, choose my input LUT. As you guys know, I have that uh, balanced color true basic log conversion pack. I will leave down in the description below. I absolutely love this pack. It's very, very accurate. And it also includes the exposure correction at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that LUT and we already have our shot. Um, the exposure is correct. We will probably raise it up in a minute just because, but the exposure was corrected. Um, now, it is slightly underexposed and it was genuinely slightly underexposed while we were there. So this is actually what it looked like while we were on set. So I'm going to go ahead and fix the white balance. So I'm going to click this little dropper here and his shirt is white. But if you're using a slate, if you have a slate, I highly suggest you use that. Um, and, I, and we had a slate. It's just for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm going to choose his shirt because I actually know that his shirt is white. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And that should fix our tones. That's not where we needed it. Looks like it's a little bit underexposed here. So I'm going to go ahead and raise that up just a little bit. I'm going to hit white balance again. Choose a shirt. There we go. Now we have accurate skin tones. And it doesn't look like how it looked on set, but the this is color correction, right? So the color was set to a warmer color, but now we have it corrected. So his shirt is white and the skin tones are accurate. So now that we've done the basic correction, I'm going to raise, I'm going to lower that um, exposure back down to zero. It is slightly underexposed. So uh, we're going to fix that by raising the whites and I'm going to raise it to about right there. And the blacks look like they're clipping just ever so slightly. And raise it to right there. Just a tad bit up. And then the whites are almost 100% up, but that's okay. Um, for this case, it, we're not seeing any grain, we're not seeing any image breakdown. Um, and we can raise the highlights a little bit too if we want, maybe raise the overall exposure. There we go. Now the whites are clipping, so we're going to bring that back down to around right here. So now we don't have any image breakup. Looks good. Kind of go through the image and make sure it looks good and consistent. We can see details in his shirt, which is what we want to see. We can zoom in to like 50%. We can see details in his shirt. We're all good. Okay, so now correction is done. 
I'm gonna go to, well, I'm gonna show you these tabs. So creative just means that you can go through and choose these different spaces. Uh, so if you want to have kind of, uh, you know, Adobe has these built-in color profiles um, and, and whatnot. So if I wanna go with Kodak A, for example, I can choose that and then kind of slowly bring it on if I want. And it'll show you kind of the creative side of Adobe, their their own built-in colors. But personally, I don't like to use their stuff. This is just something that is an option. Um, you can do blue ice, which is a cold kind of thing going on here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, none because I don't want to use this tab. I'm going to go to curves and this is where you can adjust exposure curves if you'd like. So I do want kind of the darks to be dark and the brights to be bright. I'm going to do a slight S curve here. And I'm going to also raise the mid ever so slightly. Just a little bit there. Okay, looks good. And I want to make sure that we're not losing detail in the hair either. I want to make sure that we still can see him. So I'm going to, I hit the 50% to kind of zoom in. Um, but you can also use the hand tool and grab the image and kind of go around. And if you hit control and scroll, never mind, not in this software. I was in the software too. I'm just going to kind of zoom in. We can still see detail in his hair. It's just really dark, which is fine. And this is shadow. We don't have to see that. So uh, I like this image. We are not under too underexposed. So we're good. We're still close to 100. Usually if it's like a daytime shot or something like that, you want to expose this zero through 100. But this is a nighttime shot and it's supposed to be kind of dark and moody. So this is, this is perfectly acceptable. Having it close to, you know, a little bit over 80, that's not a problem. So now we've done our curves. I'm going to go down to color wheels and match. And this is very similar to Vegas. Um, I'm going to go ahead to the highlights. And this also uh, changes the ex exposure as well. This is kind of like lift and gain. Um, so if we wanted to raise it up, we can. But I'm not going to raise it up to where it's too bright or nothing like that. I'll just bring it up to like right here. I'm going to change the highlights. I want the highlights to be... I can go for something cool. Midtones, I'll go for a cool look as well. And then the shadows, I want this one to be kind of leaning warm. I want this one to lean warm. And then HSL secondary, I don't need to use this, um, but sometimes you might need to. I personally don't need to use this though. I'm not even gonna touch on that. I rarely use HSL secondary which is not proper, but it, it's just my workflow. And then vignette, I always like to add a little bit of vignetting. So with vignette added, we can now go back to basic correction. This is just something I like to do, top it all off with a little bit of contrast. And there is our final image. And the nice thing is that if you wanna see the before and after, we can actually just go take the, uh, the adjustment layer off. So this is without, this is with, without, with, obviously very, very different image. Um, this side definitely gets quite a bit dark. We might be able to lay off of the, we're gonna do maybe 0.1 on the vignette. Um, on these curves, maybe delete that one or just change the curves overall. That's not too bad. Okay, that looks fine to me. And the nice thing is that because we used the adjustment layer, it, once we switch to his angle, we can see that and it's just fine. So now it's matched because we use the adjustment layer. And then if we ever need to disable it, we can. So that is my Adobe workflow. That is how I color grade in Adobe. I rarely edit in Adobe, but we are editing Pro as raw. If you want to change that, you can use Assimilate Scratch. I have a tutorial on how to transcode 
uh, ZRAW and use ZRAW in Assimilate Scratch. It is the exact same process, so I'll leave that down in the description below if you guys want to check out that video as well. Um, it's the exact same process. You just choose different formats, so it'll teach you how to use the software. Um, if you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, if you guys have any other tutorials you'd like me to make, go ahead and comment down below, and I'll do that. Hopefully this footage will come to light soon. I don't want to show too much of it, and I definitely didn't let you guys hear any of the dialogue, but hopefully this project will come out soon. And that's pretty much it, so hope you guys have a great day.